Hi there, welcome back to the car pitch here on the Car UK channel. So, good news, sales have reappeared. We have been selling over the last 24 hours. It's now Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we say the last video I did was just on Saturday. I put it out on Sunday evening. And uh, like I say, it was a bit doom and gloom. I've been doom and gloom for about a couple of weeks now because sales have been, well, pretty much on the floor. The odd one here, the odd one there, nothing to write home about. And like I said, it's been crap really for, with the exception of June, which was all right for a few weeks, but May wasn't great. June was okay. And then July started reasonably okay and then died off. So over the last three months, it's been pretty poor. But the drought, as I mentioned in the last video, appears to have lifted because in the last 24 hours, like someone's flicked a switch it has gone absolutely balmy we've had people on we've had uh, subscribers in we've had people uh, locally in as well mixed bag and we've sold a few cars so i thought i'd just do a little extra video for you give you an idea about what's been going on what's sold um, and what's also appeared as well we've got a few new vehicles that have been uh, brought into uh, stock as well so let's have a quick nosy round we'll start off inside as you can see we'll start off with some bad news actually before we get into the good news i can cheer myself up uh, the sportage is back on the ramp in the air I mean, every time I uh, do a video, this thing is on a ramp. It's now flipped round since. Let me explain what's going on here. And as you can see as well, there's uh, major work that's been going on. Uh, basically, this one we had needed a clutch in, put the clutch in um, the other week. Need the turbo charge as well, it was leaking. Done all that, got it on the ground the other day on Monday and go for a test drive in it. Drives lovely, but there's a butt coming. It crunches in third. Third gear is crunching. We bought this on the basis that it needed a gearbox but the clutch was collapsing it when we took it apart. Uh, so we assume we might get away with putting the clutch in and it might not be gearbox related. It might have been a misdiagnosis. Um, we span it, we span the box, the old box round and it's uh, nice and quiet. So we thought we might get away with this. However, the, uh, the only thing you can't really check uh, when you've got a box out on the floor, like this one here, which is now on the floor, is the synchro mesh because you just don't know what they're gonna be like until you physically go and drive it. So we went out and drove it. It, like, it drives absolutely superb, but it just crunches in third. And they said there's nothing you can do about that until you put it back together like i said we never drove it before it came in as well because it was a non-runner so we just weren't aware of it so now i've had to pull the box back out and i've just had to basically bite the bullet and spend nearly 500 quid on a uh, another box for this uh, sportage which is a bit of a kick in the teeth however we budgeted in the fact that we might need to put a box in it when we first bought it so it hasn't come as a great financial surprise to us just a bit of a disappointment but there we go so it's out as you can see there there is the new clutch which is done about one mile uh yeah there we are and uh let's say the box is on the floor now and we'll get new one in it's due probably thursday so it's now back on the ramp but as soon as it's back in it's getting off the ramp and it's not going back on for some length of time we're going to get other things done on it first like paint and stuff and we'll get it back home we need to the brakes and that so it's a work in progress it's probably behind now by another week or two uh, at least probably two weeks really until we can actually physically get it done dusted so that's the bad news anyway so that's out of the way however good news let's start with some good news with sales uh, we'll start off well right in front of us fit panda fit panda sold the panda is sold 28.95 sold to a local customer who actually bought a car, car off me about mm, whew, five six months ago it's a little bit awkward because i've had to take her car back in part exchange which is a 10 plate old shape Vauxhall Mariva A. We've had a bit of a run on Marivas at the moment, but this one uh, we sold to her. It's a good car, I took it back in. Back to give a really handy amount on the part exchange, far more than I would have usually done, because obviously I'm in that awkward position where I've sold her a car, what, a few months ago, and now she wants to upgrade it to something a bit newer, uh, which was her intention originally. She was up to come out of an older car, and she went into a Mariva, she went from like an 05 plate to a 10 plate, now she wants to go to a 14 plate, which is fine. But obviously, like I said, you've had to give a little bit more to facilitate a deal and obviously feel as though I'm not uh, sort of uh, pulling the uh, pants down on the customer. But the good thing about the Mariba she's part X in, as we'll see when he comes in and I'll do a bit of a walk round on it, is it's good enough to retail again. And the last one we had, similar, the black one, which we did the warrant job on the other day, uh, that did 19.95. This one might do 18.95 on a template. It will sell. So I said, I've not got loads in them, but part X, but there's a nice little margin in it and obviously facilitates the deal on this one. Not budged on the price. We're gonna to have to uh, do a few bits to it. Got to do a clutch master cylinder on it at the moment. It's got a squeaky clutch master cylinder. So we're just doing that uh, tomorrow. We're gonna to get that fixed and done, then prepped and checked, and it can go. That's pretty much it. We've done everything else to it, really. It was just those little bits. It's just developed a little bit of a squeak, probably because it's been standing still. It's very common on these Fiat's. So that's good news, that is sold. That's a, a good one. Uh, we've also sold as well uh, the, uh, well, I've got a few bits here to show you in a minute, we'll come back to them. We've also sold this, the Volvo. The Volvo sold, the old C30. 
beautiful. It's sold, a 1.6 petrol Volvo, and it's, um, a young lad's had it. He was the first person who came in buying on Monday. We'd sold the dash here on Saturday, so that we had one sale on Saturday, but we had a few inquiries on other bits and bobs. Then Monday came, and it was quiet until about 10-ish. And about 10 half 10, first person comes on, young lad, and he buys this. He's also got a part exchange, which is an old Mini Cooper, which I've actually got a Mini somewhere in the corner over there, buried a red one, these are clutch. But this is the same as that, it's a, it's a blue Mini Cooper, one six, no, it's not a Mini Cooper, it's a Mini one, apologies. But it's an older Mini, we call a Trident engine Mini. Uh, it's not bad, actually. He actually bought it from this site, not from me, but from the old uh, previous owner some years ago. And it's in good nick, actually, and next door, the body uh, workshop there have looked after it. So, um, so yeah, it looks all right. I don't think it's good enough to retail. It's got a little bit of lack appeal on the bonnet. Whether or not I'm going to bother to do it, it might just go as a cheapie, I don't know. But it, it seemed all right, and it drove all right. Uh, and I've just give, I think I've given about 600 quid in part X for it uh, to facilitate this deal. A few little bits we've got to do for the MOT but hopefully we should get that out by the end of the week, which is great news. And again, uh, no uh, discount needed on that one. Uh, the lad was quite happy with what he paid for it, uh, although he did try to get a little bit of a discount. Other things we've sold, well, like I said, we sold the Volvo, uh, well, Dashi first, then the Volvo on the Monday, then the Panda in the early afternoon. Then we had a lady on who looked at the Mocha, who went on a test drive, came back, had another test driver, a partner. They went away, so I was thinking, mm, not sure if they were gonna deal or not. They seemed really keen making the right noises but they went away nonetheless uh, so uh, obviously not a done deal but then this morning we had a guy on who bought this cash guy subscriber who's bought this one um a nice thing we'll obviously the cash guy freshened it up it's been sitting over there for last month or so and uh, other than the first week or so we had a few inquiries on it it's not really moved and then i took it off cleaned it all up buffed the brains out of it revalidated it repictured it and went for it in the workshop, we had it all prepped and done, all the jobs done, and got it back out on sale, and then just moved it. And by moving it, it seems to have just almost sort of triggered a ruck of people to come on and look at it over the last sort of three, four working days. Guy came on this morning and has bought it, which is great news. So it's a really, real decent car, that. So we're gonna get that turned around this week. It's got a sort out of stereo issue on it at the moment. We've got a stereo problem. It's not powering up, so we need to fix that. But other than that, we've done all the other preps, so it's good news. So that's great, so we can get that down the road hopefully this weekend out to the customer. Then after this, obviously sold the cash guy. People came back with the, uh, who test drove the mocker the day before and put a deposit down on the white mocker in the afternoon, which is great news. So that's now sold as well, uh, which is good. So no part exchanges on these two, but we have on the other two. But the part X's are all right, I think. I'm definitely we can retail them or even. We're gonna to have to retail them or even because I've given too much good money for not to be able to, re to uh, deal it uh, out again. Um, but the Mini, I'm not sure about that. It, at 600 quid, I'm not moaning because I can dispose of it uh, and get me money back even, even if it's not good enough to retail. I don't know, we'll see when it comes in. But I'm glad the Mocker sold because, I mean, I was, I'd expect it to be, I've sold quicker than this, to be honest. And we had lots of interest, but I don't know, it's just been really quiet. So I think it was probably not so much the issue with a car. I just think it was just the wrong time uh, to be putting it on sale and expecting you know, a ruck of people to be jumping on it. But we always had inquiries, which always led me to believe it was price right and uh, it certainly was a decent enough car. Got a few bits we have done on this and we've got it still to do. We've had done some wipers on it, it needed a complete new wiper setup, motor and the linkages were all broken, so we put a brand new setup on there. We've got to do strip and clean the brakes, we've got to do all the housings we do on these, typical Vauxhalls, every one of them is always bloody leaking, so we change them. Uh, we've got to do a little bit of paint, so had a bit of a touch up on the back there, the, the uh, tailgate lid, so we've got to sort that out, that's going to paint this week get the whole car mopped as well because it's a little bit flat in places so we just want a nice bit of a bit of a tickle on it and just so we can get it uh, looking lovely and shiny again we'll get the paint man sort that out and that was pretty much it any other little bits like toe and eye cover a little bit of trim inside that wants a little bit of attention but that's that's pretty much it we can do all that in house yeah so really really great day like i said four in the last well 24 hours and then obviously the one on saturday as well and we've had interest in other things. I've got someone potentially on my Clio, uh, which isn't even ready yet. And I've had a few inquiries as well from Saturday, which are still in the ether as well. So it's looking good. And also as well, we've been prepping. Although we have been sort of beaten by the, last, the sun in the last 24 hours, today and yesterday have been absolutely scorching. And time you get to like sort of two or three o'clock, trying to work in this heat, it's, uh, oh, it's a nightmare. But we have progressed. We've got a few bits on sale, or sorry, a few bits near sale and one thing on sale. I'll show you, quickly show you what's just come in. So we've got um, this, uh, the Kia, this is this Kia Seed. I, this car has got a bit of history because this actually, we sold this about, I'd say about eight, nine months ago. It was lingering in the, uh, by the gate for a while, We've not long after we opened. 
but this is a template KC diesel, estate 17 diesel, or the 16s. Might be 16s, I think these are. I think these are 16s. Uh, CRDI, good little thing actually. They're a bit agricultural, so they're not, they're not the most refined of diesel engines, but they are reliable and you know, pretty decent to be fair. I, I quite rate them. And uh, so this one is basically came in. Uh, we bought it back off a guy who lost his license. So we he sold the car. We sold the car to him about nine months ago. It wasn't a car that I actually purchased. It was left over from my um, the previous uh, owner here, my landlord, and we sold it on his behalf. And so the guy's had it. He's, he's lost his license. He's um, hard of hearing, and his hearing's got well, he's got worse basically, and he's took his license took off him. So we uh, came in and we bought it back off him, and that's pretty much it really. We had it picked up today. Um, it just just started the cleaning process on it. Um, we're going to give it a bit of a buff up, which we'll probably just do ourselves to be fair, just because it's got a few bits in places where it's just a little bit flat. So just wants a bit of a, bit of, well, a, bit of a buff up and a polish. Uh, inside, other than the fact it's just built a bit dirty, but it, it's no rips or tears in the seats. It drives really, really well, surprisingly well. On this one, we're going to have to sort out a rear caliper that's sticking, because they're really common on Kia's Iron Dyes, but calipers always sticking. So we've got to do one of those, because I can feel it when you're driving, it's got a bit of a drag. So we're going to get on the ramp and check that out possibly some tyres on the front, general prep we need to do anyway. Uh, I also need to put some glow plugs in it. I've got a feeling that it's just, when you first start it in the morning when it's cold, it's just not quite firing on what it should do. It's like almost like a second too late. Uh, and they are, they are renowned for these, for glow plugs failing as well. So I'll just change them, it's easy to do. And like I said, it works in coercion with the DPF system as well. So if you get one that goes down, you'll get a rook of DPF faults coming on. So if, you, if you've got any inkling that's got a deep, you know, it's not starting correctly or the glow plugs are going faulty or never been changed, just change them because it, it will save you a whole lot of hassle in the long run when you start getting DPF issues further down the line. So we'll do that and then we'll get it up for sale hopefully this week. Cheapy little car, it's the state diesel, it's probably going to be like 23 95 24 95 somewhere around there. I don't think it's that mileage, I don't think it's horrendous, I'm not saying it's low mileage, it's probably done over 100 I think. I can't remember exactly. I think he's done about 110, I think, roughly. Let me just double check for you. 109. So, there we go. Like I said, it's uh, about right, that sort of money. Um, and I've had a few of these on since we've been here, and they've always been good news. Always have been good news. And, see, they're generally quite reliable. And they're quite spacious as well. Cheap to run. And I think, I'll be corrected, I think they are £35 road tax, which for a big old estate car is not bad. Other things we've had on as well, uh, Corsa just literally dropped off a few minutes ago. Uh, this has been dropped off, this is a 61 plate SRI, 1.4 SRI uh, Corsa D on a 61. Nice thing, is it 1.4 SRI model? So they don't, I don't think they made a 1.2 SRI, I think they were SXIs. So it's a lovely looking car and it drives actually very, very well. It's a nice thing as well and doesn't need any paint or anything like that, it's great. However, it's a 1.4 SRI and it's one of those cars that's either going to fly out the door or it's going to sit around a bit because it's a 1.4. Really, it'd be probably better as a 1.2, but that doesn't mean it won't sell. It will sell, but it's just the market for first time drivers, which we sell a lot to, the 1 litres fly out, the 1.2 is the sort of the second choice, and then there's some people who can afford the 1.4s will have the 1.4s. Obviously, if they have a choice, they all want the 1.4s because they want a little bit of extra speed, but it's insurance that's the killer. So you usually find you sell that to some younger 20 year old, not a 17, 18 year old, because the insurance is just not quite there. It'll go. We've sold one of these before, an SXI one, when we first opened. It did, it did languish for a little bit, but they all go in the end. But you make sure you start price it sensibly. That's going to go up for about 27.95, which is actually slightly less than Butch suggesting, by about 200 quid. But it doesn't matter. It's a cheap car, not, not obviously with the price. Get it out the door. It'll be, like I say, someone will lap that up, I'm sure. And finally as well, a bit of progress over in the corner. I-10 is nearly there. I've got to get finished to, uh, tomorrow. Try and get that prepped. A little cheapy. I've already mentioned, I think I've mentioned it briefly before. But it's a little cheap I-10. It um, needs a bit of trim bit sorting out on this side here. Some plastics painting we're going to do tomorrow. Uh, it's had a um, exhaust system on it. Full exhaust system from flexi to the back. Done because it was blowing. It drives really well. One of these cars where it's just like it's... <laughs> It's, it's a little bit tiny bit bitty in places. It's like it's got a fog lamp cap missing, which has arrived today, we're gonna to do. It's got some scratches that some will buff out, some need touching in. It's got a little mark on the passenger's rear, sorry, driver's rear door, which is really faint, which will probably will buff out, although you might just see a little bit of it. You could paint the door, but time you've painted the door you know, and put the price of the paint on it and stuff, it's not gonna make any difference. So uh, you might as well sell it cheap. 
so that's what we're going to do with it we're going to make it smart get all these trim bits sorted and get it all polished up and trims and all that do all that get it running right and then obviously just price it sensibly just like a cheapy 1800 quid car something that you can put an 80 odd thousand cheap road tax just a little cheapy car it will fly out the door so i've got to get on with that this week um and then the other one we've got sorted is this mcgann which i bought from aston barclay a few weeks ago um i've had uh, this uh, bumper painted on it back bumper uh, the back bumper was uh, all peppered i think it was on the truck a few weeks ago we mentioned it and also the bottom as well done and that was and, uh, oh, a bit of repair on the front as well it had a little bit of a bit of a mark as well down on this bumper corner here right at the bumper it's split but the, my mechanic uh, sorry my body man has uh, prepared that as well and blown it all in and it's looking beautiful so one six petrol i quite like the mechanics they're all right um say so they, they drive really nice and this is one's the same fortunately um hasn't fared too well in the uh, on the prep we've had to go through it does need a few bits it needs uh, tires all round they don't look that bad but when you actually look in the tread they're all cracked so i've got to put all new tires all round not terribly dear the new tires but you know still a kick in the teeth uh, and it also wants rear brakes on it because you can see here they are absolutely horrible and rusty although strangely don't make a noise when you're driving which is odd usually they'll be like clattering and banging and you know scraping when you're putting the, putting the foot brake down it dries beautiful however it wants rear brakes because they are awful uh, and on these the reason why half these every time you see them again and some of the scenics as well and the rear brakes always look terrible it's because they are terribly expensive to replace so most people try and get every single last pence out of them they possibly can because they've got wheel bearings built into the back of the discs so they're, they're like a hub uh, wheel bearing slash brake disc together so they're quite expensive uh, so you say you probably wears like a rear set of discs for a car would cost you what maybe I don't know, forty pounds, say, for a set of disc trade for most average cars, maybe even cheaper than that in some cases. Uh, but whereas these are probably like fifty pounds each to, to buy a disc, and obviously you need a set of pads as well. So quite a bit of a bit of a kick in the teeth again. But it needs it, it needs doing, and it'd be right. You've got a car there with new back brakes. Obviously, we'll strip and clean the front. You put four new tyres on it, we're servicing it, all the usual stuff that we do. And they are reasonably good cars to drive, and actually offer better value for money than maybe equivalent Focus or Astra. I've stuck it up for twenty three ninety five. I think it's up for. I should know the price. I only did it this morning. Twenty three ninety five. So there we go. So that's in as well. So we've made a lot of progress. We've got stuff sorted. We'll show you this in the corner. The old Chevrolet Cruze. That's um, got the wheels back on now. The wheels have been sent away. We'll have them done and brought back. Uh, this is a one point six Chevrolet Cruze, which is effectively an Astra J. Those of you who haven't seen the uh, video a few weeks ago when I bought this. Um, and I, I had it painted as well actually and picked up from paint this uh, I bought this from auction central car auctions handy money actually although it did need a bit of work exhaust system was it was blowing like hell so we need a new exhaust on it which we've done Lambda sensor is well we changed on them because they're renowned for going it needed paint on the door here at the bottom it needed a bit of paint there which we had done and so that's pretty much it really other things we need to do to it because it's it's effectively a Vauxhall Astra J so you've, you've got all the same issues you get on them so like leaky housings and stuff so we do all them uh, and I said uh, we, once we've done that we can get it on sale so we'll do that over the next day or so and get it cleaned for the moment so it's a little bit different see so these Chevrolet Cruze came as hatchbacks or this one is actually a uh, saloon boot model which is dead rare they, most of them were hatchbacks but they did do obviously a uh, Oh, it's locked I'm sorry it did do obviously a boot version uh, as we can see here and um, five speed manual all Vauxhall based obviously some of the switch gear is a little bit sort of generic uh, to some GM stuff you get in America uh, but yeah they're a nice thing and they drive really really well actually uh, the Astro J's drive well and they're just a bit different I like the front end of them I like the grill it just looks a bit more you know a bit more presence to it and they said they're not dear cars you can sell that well, I think it's got about 80 90 foul on it and you can get that right and sell that for Twenty three ninety five, and it's a cheap car, good value really. You've got good old, a good old sort of big family saloon, which you don't see that often anymore, um, which is reasonably cheap to run, and it's the one six petrol, which is the one you really want. They did do a lot of these in one eight, which to me was just a bit pointless because the one eight's a dead deer to tax, not particularly very fast or much quicker than the one six, and also it's more expensive, more on fuel to run and insurance. So one six is the what you want. There we are. So that one is uh, going to be going on sale, hopefully, uh, in the next few days. So anyway, as you can tell from my mood, I'm uh, a lot more happy today than I was just a few days ago. Uh, it's been uh, a really great 24 hours. Uh, it's come at the right time. 
obviously with this drought we've been having over the last few weeks, it's been playing on my mind a lot, to be honest, because obviously you just don't know what can happen next. You don't know, is it a downturn in the economy? You know, things like that can obviously have a major effect on businesses. And if we always go through quiet patches, that, that happens in any business. But when you get ones that last too bit too long than you probably suspected, that's when you start getting a bit nervous. Uh, but look, it's, um, I'm happy. I'll take what I can. We've done all right the last 24 hours. We now need to really sort of get crack on, get these cars done, prepped, out, get cash in. Been buying as well today, actually, as well, on, the, on that front, because with the success of the last 24 hours, I thought we'll buy a couple more, plus I was also trying to focus on two particular vehicle, or one particular vehicle, really, I bought two of, uh, which is Ford Focuses. I haven't had any Focuses on now for about a month or so, uh, and I keep getting asked for them. So I bought today a 11 plate, old, last of the older shape Focus, I'll put you which one here, an example of one, uh, and also uh, the later shape Focus on the 12 plate. So I bought two of those, both petrol 1.6s. I will buy a diesel on occasion, but I just prefer the 1.6 petrol, to be honest. So I've got both of those coming in next week, and I've also got people lined up potentially who might be interested in those as well. So like I said, a little bit of buying as well. So I'm really pleased with what we've been doing over the last 24 hours, and may it continue. So we'll see. Uh, the best way to keep up with what's going on here at the car pitch in general and make sure you catch uh, my videos is to like and subscribe to the channel. I usually do a pitch update pretty much every week and then obviously lots of other content as well. And obviously there'll be a lot more content coming over uh, the month of August. We're going back to the auctions. I've got auction content as always coming along with also some other interesting topics that I talk about. So if you're interested in that, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll uh, see you all very soon.